Hi, how you doing? Good, I hope. <clears throat> well, I'm making this video mainly for myself, but you can listen in if you like to. <clears throat> I have so many questions about the sociology, it's driving me crazy. There's so much stuff in it, in here, and I even have to go look up a lot of the words they use are so big. <clears throat> and I find it rather strange that uh, people like this talk about mankind with the word human? How do they get away with using that kind of word unless they're some other species and not homo sapiens, is what I wondered. But there's a lot of uh, info on it on the internet and um, a lot of new things popping, popping up about it. And I wanted to put the contents on here so I can go ahead and look things up when I don't have any hard copy to look at. And uh, here they have contents and brief in this book. In part one, the study of society. Number one is the sociological perspective. And number two is doing sociology research methods. Part two is the individual in society. And the third one is culture. Fourth is socialization and development. Fifth is social interaction. Six, social groups and organizations. Seven, deviant behavior and social control. Now, that's very questionable to me right there. <clears throat> Part three, social inequality. Number eight, social class in the United States. Number nine, global stratification. Whatever stratification is. Number 10, racial and ethnic minorities. Number 11, gender stratification. I gotta look that word up. Part four, institutions. And funny enough, uh, they're trying to call corporations human. And how are they going to study a human corporation? Uh-uh. God forbid. Part 4, Institutions. Number 12, Marriage and Alternative Family Arrangements. 13, Religion. 14, Education. 15, Political and Economic Systems. Part 5, Social Change and Social Issues. 16, Population and Urban Society, 17, Health and Aging, 18, Collective Behavior and Social Change. Now that's got everything all gathered up in one for something in brief, but then when you get to the contents, oh wow, they got so much stuff in here on each of these things. In part one, the socio sociological perspective sociology as a point of view the sociological imagination is sociology common sense sociology and science sociology as a social science the development of sociology Augustus Comente Harriet Martinow Herbert Spencer Karl Marx Emil Durkheim Max Weber the development of sociology in the United States and under theoretical perspectives, functionalism, conflict theory, the interactionist perspective, symbol interactionism, contemporary sociology, theory and research. And then they have a summary. <clears throat> How sociology can do it. Day-to-day -day sociology. How sociologists do it. Is there a difference between sociology and journalism? Good question. Uh, are diverse society, sociology in strange places? In chapter two, doing sociology research methods, the research process, and I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of them on the internet that's studying the way everybody's talking and everything too. The research process, define the problem, Review previous research. Develop one or more hypotheses. 
Determine the research design. Define the sample and collect data. Analyze the data and draw conclusions. Prepare the research report. Objectivity and sociology research. Ethical issues and sociology research. And the summary. How sociologists do it. Day-to-day -day sociology. How sociologists do it. How to read a table. Sociology in strange places. Famous research studies you cannot do today. And in part two, the individual and society. Chapter three, culture. The concept of culture, culture and biology, culture shock, ethnocentrism and cultural relative, relativism. Components of culture, material culture, non-material culture, the origin of language, language and culture, the symbolic nature of culture, symbols and culture, culture and adaptation, mechanisms of cultural change, cultural lag, animals and culture, subcultures, types of subcultures, universals of culture, the division of labor, marriage, the family, and the incest taboo, rites of passage, ideology, culture and individual choice, Summary 7, socio uh, Global Sociology, Struggling to Accept the Jury System? Ah, they're part of the Big Brothers, aren't they, for their New World Order? Global Sociology, Is There a Culture and Clash Between the United States and Saudi Arabia? Day-to-day -day Sociology, Symbols in Cyberspace. Sociology in Strange Places, Doing Research in a War Zone. How sociologists do it, the conflict between being a researcher and being a human being. Imagine that. You know, I'm really wondering if uh, there's some extraterrestrials morphed into a human-looking body to do a lot of this stuff. So at least you could see them then. Socialization and development. Becoming a person. Biology and culture. Nature versus nature, a false debate, sociobiology, deprivation and development, the concept of self, dimensions of human development, theories of development, Charles Horton Cooley, George Herbert Mead, Sigmund Freud, Eric H. Erickson, early socialization in American society, the family, the school, peer groups, <clears throat> Television, movies, and video games. Adult socialization, marriage and responsibility, parenthood, career development, vocation and identity, aging and society, summary, sociology in strange places. Can socialization make a boy into a girl? Day-to-day -day sociology. Does daycare create unruly brats? Our diverse society. Win friends and lose your future. The costs of not acting white. Day-to-day -day sociology. Television made you the designated driver. Global sociology. To succeed in Japan, give all the credit to your boss. And number five. Social interaction. Understanding social interaction. Context. Norms. Ethnomethodology. Demiturgy. Types of social interaction, nonverbal behavior, exchange, cooperation, conflict, competition, elements of social interaction, statuses, roles, role sets, role strain, role conflict, role playing. In the summary, global sociology, cross culture, social interaction quiz. Day to day sociology, can you spot a liar? News you can use. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Um, yeah. And I wonder about uh, these bases or colonies that our military are doing. They seem to be doing it for some of these churches. Imagine that. Number chapter six. Social groups and organizations. The nature of groups. Primary and secondary groups. Functions of groups, defining boundaries, choosing leaders, making decisions, setting goals, assigning tasks,
Controlling members' behavior. Reference groups, small groups, large groups, associations. Gemenschaft and Gelserschaft. Mechanical and organic solidarity. Bureaucracy. Weber's model of bureaucracy. An ideal type. Bureaucracy today. The reality. The iron law of oligarchy. Institutions and social organization. Social institutions. Social organization. Summary. Sociology in strange places. Are you really my friend? Facebook and intimate communications. Imagine who's really researching Facebook and giving their opinion in the news. How sociologists do it. Can one bad apple spoil the whole group? <laughs> Some people forget all things, don't they? Or they didn't know it at all. Day-to-day -day sociology. The strength of the informal structure in job hunting. Our diverse society limiting technology to save the community. Chapter 7 is Deviant Behavior and Social Control. Defining Normal and Deviant Behavior. Making Moral Judgments. The Functions of Deviance. The Dysfunctions of Deviance. Mechanisms of Social Control. Internal Means of Control. External Means of Control. Sanctions. Theories of Crime and Deviance. Biological Theories of Deviance. Psychological Theories of Deviance. Sociological Theories of Deviance. The Importance of Law. The Emergence of Laws. Crime in the United States. Crime st Statistics. Kinds of Crime in the United States. Juvenile Crime. Violent Crime. Property Crime. White Collar Crime. Victimless Crime. Victims of Crime. Criminal Justice in the United States. The Police. The Courts. Prisons. A shortage of prisons, women in prison, the funnel effect, truth in sentencing, and the summary. How sociologists do it is the little things that matter in preventing crime. How sociologists do it, serial murderers and mass murderers. Sociology in strange places are peaceful pot smokers being sent to prison. Yes, they are, and that is a tool for those who are against our nation. Global sociology, a bad country in which to be a criminal. Oh, and I should said they want to take this country over and be dictators. A bad country in which to be a criminal. Sociology in strange places. The continuing debate over capital punishment. Does it deter murderers? Does it indeed? Part 3 is social inequality. In Chapter 8, social class in the United States. The American class structure, the upper class, the upper middle class, the middle middle class, the lower middle class, the lower class, income dis distribution. And that pretty much shows how the elite think they are so much more than just humans compared to us. Poverty, the feminization of poverty. Yes, and they treat us like trash and still in America today. How do we count the poor? Myths about the poor. Government assistance programs. The changing face of poverty. poverty. Consequences of social stratification. What does social inequality... Why does social inequality exist? The functionalist theory. Conflict. Modern conflict theory. The need for synthesis. Summary, our diverse society. How much are you responsible for your success? How sociologists do it. Where do the poor live today? Global sociology. Rich countries with poor children. That's us. One diverse society. How easy is it to change social class? Chapter 9 is global stratification. Stratification systems. The case system. The estate system. The class system. Wow, I didn't know we had that many systems in America. I guess that's their diversification. Theories of global stratification. <clears throat> Modernization theory. Dependency theory. Global diversity. World health trends. The health of infants and children in developing countries. HIV and AIDS. 
Population Trends Global Sociology How Countries Differ Japan and Nigeria Sociology in Strange Places Life Chances of an Adolescent Girl in Liberia Liberia Global Sociology HIV AIDS Worldwide Facts Global Sociology Where Are the Baby Girls Chapter 10 Racial and Ethnic Minorities The Concept of Race Genetic Definitions Legal Definitions Social Definitions The Concept of Ethnic Group The Concept of Minority Problems in Race and Ethnic Relations Prejudice Discrimination Institutional Prejudice and Discrimination Patterns of Racial and Ethnic Relations Assimilation Pluralism Subjugation Segregation Expulsion Annihilation which, by the way, I have discovered about the Catholic Church and knowing it for so long. They are their own government of the Vatican and their corporate churches or franchises to get as many Americans in there and out of the loyalty to the United States to be loyal to them. And so they refuse to assimilate and support the illegal aliens that come in from other countries that refuse to assimilate as well. Racial and Ethnic Immigration to the United States Immigration today compared with the past. Illegal Immigration America's Ethnic Composition today White Anglo-Saxon Protestants African Americans Hispanics Latinos Asian Americans Native Americans A Diverse Society and the summary of that is our diverse society. How many minorities are there? Our diverse society. Will English continue to be the language of the United States? Global so sociology. In the future, minorities will be the new majority. Oh yeah, there's so many coming in. And if there's some from another planet that can outdo us in every way and read our minds, what are we going to do about it, huh? <clears throat> Sociology in strange places. Hispanics, racial group, ethnic group, neither. Duh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, how I've, I have more, but i got to run a quick errand, and I'll be right back to make number two. Okay, we're to uh, chapter 11, Gender Stratification. How are the sexes separate and unequal? And one thing I'm wondering about, uh, aren't the ETs rather sexual beings, whether they can reproduce that way or not? Or was they studying me by scaring me, sneaking into my bed and making me think I was getting raped? Now that I am really wondering about. Either, either that or it's proven they are sociologists and I'm being studied. Are the sexes <clears throat> separate and unequal? Yeah. Historical views, religious views, biological views, gender and sex, sociological view, cross-cultural evidence. What produces gender inequality? The functionalist viewpoint. The conflict theory viewpoint, gender role socialization, childhood socialization, adolescent socialization, gender differences in social interaction, gender inequality in work, job discrimination. Summary, sociology in strange places. Let women vote and you will get masculine women and effeminate men. <laughs> they think that for sure. Oh, that's crazy. You see how I don't trust these sociologists. Our diverse society. Why do women live longer than men? Day-to-day -day sociology. Speaking, writing, or blogging. <clears throat> Nowhere to hide gender. Our diverse society. Who is a better boss? Part 4, Institutions. Chapter 12, Marriage and Alternative Family Arrangements. The Nature of Family Life. Functions of the Family. 
family structures, defining marriage, romantic love, marriage rules, marital <clears throat> residence, mate selection, the transformation of the family, the decline of the traditional family, changes in the marriage rate, cohabitation, childless couples, changes in household size, women in the labor force, family violence, divorce, divorce laws, child custody laws, remarriage and step families, family diversity, the growing single population, single parent families, gay and lesbian couples, the future bright or dismal, summary, day-to-day -day sociology, marriage and divorce quiz, how sociologists do it, do 50% of all marriages really end in divorce, sociology in strange places, Reluctant to marry the men who want to stay single. I don't blame you guys, as far as that goes. Chapter 13. Oh, what a number to put religion under. The nature of religion. The elements of religion. Magic. That's a subject you ought to study. And you might see somebody you know. <clears throat> and they're priorities. Major types of religions. Supernaturalism. Animism. Theism. Monotheism. Abstract ideals. A sociological approach to religion. The functionalist perspective. The conflict theory perspective. Organization of religious life. The universal church. The ecclesia the denomination, <clears throat> the sect, millenarian movements, aspects of American religion, religion, religious diversity, widespread belief, secularism, eucumenism, major religions in the United States, Protestantism, Catholicism, Judaism, Islam, social aspects of religious affiliation. Summary, our diverse society, who is God, global sociology, the worst offenders of religious freedom, day-to-day -day sociology, today's cult might be tomorrow's mainstream religion, how sociologists do it, is your professor an atheist, our diverse society, changing religion early and often, sociology in strange places, Worshipping with a few thousand of your friends. That's, uh, that's a whole new kettle of fish by itself. Because they are doing their own sociology studies everywhere in the world. And building their colonies to do it. You know what colonies are for, don't you? Better look that up in the dictionary. Chapters 14, Education. Education, a functionalist view, socialization, cultural transmission, academic skills, innovation, child care, postponing job hunting, the conflict theory view, social control, screening and allocation, tracking, issues in American education, unequal access to education, students who speak English as a second language, high school dropouts, violence in the schools, Homeschooling, <clears throat> standardized testing, gender bias in the classroom. Yeah, little boy bullies mostly. Oh, there are some girls that need their butt whooped too, though. The gifted, summary, answers to key thinkers. Sociology in strange places. <clears throat> when race, money, and education collide. Global sociology. Illiteracy. Illiteracy is common throughout the world. Day-to-day -day sociology. Is a college degree worth the trouble? Uh, only for the college to give them money. You get too much college and they call you too educated and you ain't going to get no job. I know people that's done that. Chapter 15. Political and Economic Systems. Politics, power, and authority. Power, political authority. And of course, the politics has went off into their stream, their main field of 
money too. Government of the state, functions of the state, types of states, autocracy, totalitarianism, democracy, functionalist and conflict theory views of the state, the economy and the state, capitalism, <clears throat> the Marxist response to capitalism, socialism, the capitalist view of social, socialism, <clears throat> democratic socialism, political change, institutionalized political change, rebellions, revolutions, the American political system, the two-party system, voting behavior, African Americans as a political force, Hispanics as a political force, the role of the media, special interest groups, Summary, day-to-day -day sociology, eat your fresh fruit and vegetables or pay a fine. Uh, figures and that stuff's the highest price food there is, healthy stuff. <clears throat> Global sociology, does terror, suicide terrorism make sense? Sociology in strange places. I know it's not true, but I'm not voting for him anyway. <clears throat> Part 5, Social Change and Social Issues Chapter 16, Population and Urban Society Population Dynamics, Fertility, Morality, Mortality <clears throat> Migration, Theories of Population Malthus' Theory of Population Growth Marx's Theory of Population Growth Demographic Transition Theory A Second Demographic Transition Population Growth and the Environment Sources of Optimism Urbanization and the Development of Cities The Earliest Cities Pre-Industrial Cities Industrial Cities The Structure of Cities The Nature of Urban Life Social Interaction in Urban Areas Urban Neighborhoods Urban Decline Homelessness Future Urban Growth in the United States, Suburban Living, Exurbs, Summary, Answers to Key Thinkers, Sociology in Strange Places. Do men without women become violent? Global Sociology. What if the population problem is not enough people? Uh, that, uh, that's, that's a religious thought. Uh, instead of replenishing, they want to overpopulate and choke this world. Day-to-day -day sociology. Pay for something you can get for free and hurt the environment at the same time. <clears throat> Chapter 17, Health and Aging. The experience of illness. Health care in the United States. Yep, it's to zero these days. Gender and health. Race and health. Social class and health. Age and health, education and health, women in medicine, contemporary health care issues, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, health insurance, preventing illness. Oh, that's one of the worst issues I've ever, ever looked into. The aging population, composition of the older population, aging and sex ratio. Aging and race, aging and martial, marital status, aging and wealth, <clears throat> global aging, future trends, summary, global sociology, women live longer than men throughout the world, our diverse society, <clears throat> why is a life expectancy in the United States higher, day-to-day -day sociology, marijuana, a benign drug or a health problem, no, it's good for you. That's why they don't want you to have it. It puts some doctors out of some money. How sociologists do it. Can your friends make you fat? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, if they're running fast food places, probably. Sociology in strange places. The discovery of a disease. Our diverse society. Stereotypes about the elderly. Global soci sociology. Global aging quiz. In chapter 18, <clears throat> the last one, Collective Behavior and Social Change. Society and Social Change. 
Sources of social change. Internal sources of social change. External sources of social change. That could be, uh, could determine ETs too, couldn't it? Crowd behavior and social change. Attributes of crowds. Types of crowds. The changeable nature of crowds. Dispersed collective behavior. Fads and fashions. Rumors. Public opinion. Mass hysteria and panic. Social movements. Relative deprivation theory. Resource mobilization theory. Types of social movements. The life cycle of social movements. Globalization and social change. Social changes in the United States. Technological change. The workforce of the future. In the summary, answers to key thinkers. Sociology in strange places. Predicting the future of computers. How sociologists do it, coming together but staying apart. Global sociology, big profits from small hands. And for sure, when the end of the com this computer comes, I won't be back on here. I think I will be pretty much done. Now I wanted to tell about uh, a little bit of what this book determines the origin and history of soci sociology came from and I've looked it up on the internet and I found a few different things but uh, the one in the book I thought was closest to it but when you create an institution it always turns bad the bigger it gets the worse it gets so I'll let you know about some of this in the next one and that'll be the history okay here is a little bit of the origin and history of sociology. The development of sociology in the United States. <clears throat> sociology had its roots in Europe and did not become widely recognized in the United States until almost the beginning of the 20th century. The early growth of American sociology began at the University of Chicago. That setting provided a context in which a large number of scholars and their students could work closely to refine their views of the discipline. It was there that the first graduate department of sociology in the United States was founded in the 1890s. From the 1920s to the 1940s, the so-called Chicago School of Sociologists led American sociology in the study of communities with particular emphasis on urban neighborhoods and ethnic areas. And now they really figured out how to make money with it, aren't they? And power. Many of America's leading sociologists from this period were members of the Chicago School, including Robert E. Park, W. I. Thomas, and Ernest W. Burgess. Most of these individuals were Protestant ministers or sons of ministers and, as a group, they were deeply concerned with social reform. I need to read some more of that history. Also in Chicago, but not directly part of the university, Jane Addams, 1860-1935, was also deeply committed to social reform. Jane Adams was born in 1860 to a pro prosperous Quaker family dedicated to the anti-slavery cause. Her father, John Adams, was a politician and friend of Abraham Lincoln. Jane Adams was part of the first generation of middle-class women to go to college and graduated as valedictorian from Rockford Female Seminary, Illinois, in 1881. <clears throat> Few professions were open to educated women then, and after graduation, Adams returned home and was expected to wait for a marriage proposal. During the next few years, Adams traveled through Europe and observed the poverty that existed in the city's slums. She also studied ways in which various organizations attempted to alleviate poverty. Poverty. During her stay in London, she visited a settlement house run by Oxford University students where they helped the poor. She used this settlement house called Toynbee Hall 
as a model for a program she would later develop in Chicago to assist the poor. Jane Addams and Ellen Gates Starr finally opened the door to their own version of Toynbee Hall, Hull House, Hull. In September 1889, it was designed to serve the immigrant population of Chicago's 19th Ward. For 40 years, Hull House successfully served the community by offering a wide variety of clubs and activities. During this time, Hull House and Jane Addams became known internationally for championing, championing the rights of immigrants <clears throat> and fighting for child labor laws. She also advocated for industrial safety, juvenile courts, labor unions, women's suffrage, and world peace. And really, I've read history on <clears throat> the child labor laws back then. Families had to use their kids to even to survive. And these big businessmen and farmers, as well as industrial, used kids for slave wages. And that's pretty much what they use the Hispanics for nowadays, too. Anyway, and they use the tool that they bring with them by making it illegal. You know what I'm talking about. Adams wrote extensively <clears throat> about Hull House activities. She published 11 books and numerous articles, and she spoke often at venues throughout the United States and the world. She lived on her inheritance and the proceeds from her writing and speaking engagements because she did not receive a salary from Hull House. She also used her income to underwrite various social causes throughout her life. In 1907, she published Newer Ideals of Peace, for which she became known internationally as a pacifist. This brought her much ridicule when the United States entered World War I. But in time, the public began to embrace her ideals. By 1931, her reputation as a peacemaker was firmly established and she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, shared with Nicholas Murray Butler. After that, people from all over the world began to write her letters and to extol her work. She received pleas for intervention around the world to help alleviate hunger, poverty, and oppression. Swarthmore College. W.E.B. Du Bois, 1868-1963, became the first African-American to receive a Ph.D. from Harvard in 1896 with his dissertation, The Suppression of the African Slave Trade to the United States. Du Bois then went on to Atlanta, Atlanta University, where he established and was in charge of the sociology program until 1910, when he left to become editor of the Crises the Journal of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. By that time, Du Bois had written dozens of articles and books on the history and sociology of African Americans and was the country's leading African American sociologist. When Du Bois came of age, racism was very much a part of the American landscape <clears throat> on both a popular and academic level. Politicians and writers were openly declaring that blacks belonged to an inferior race and contributed nothing to society. Du Bois believed that doctrines and theories had a powerful effect on social conditions. Slavery and the disenfranchisement of blacks were rooted in the notion of the inferiority of the race. It was important, he felt, to change these beliefs to improve the status of African Americans. Much of his scholarly work was governed by his view the sociological studies of African Americans would have a positive effect on public opinion. Du Bois argued for the acceptance of African Americans into all areas of society and advocated militant resistance to white racism. <clears throat> he believed that it was not solely the responsibility of blacks, nor was it in their capacity to alter their collective place in American society but that it was primarily the responsibility of whites who held the power to effect such change. Yes, and there's still a lot of them guilty for this. And they go about it more secretly now. In 1903, he published The Souls of Black Folk, a collection of excellent, well-reasoned essays on race relations. 
blending sociology and economics, he described the injustices that had scarred the black experience in the United States. The problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line, he declared. Throughout his life, Du Bois considered himself torn between being a black man and being an American. This conflict led him to feel like an exile in the United States, and eventually he left and moved to Ghana. As Du Bois noted in his autobiography, had it not been for the race problem early thrust upon me and enveloping me, I should have probably been an unquestioning worshiper at the shrine of the established social order into which I was born. But just that part of this order which seemed to most of my fellows nearest perfection seemed to me most inequitable and wrong, and started from that critique I gradually as the years went by found other things to question in my environment. Du Bois, 1968. Du Bois died in 1963 at the age of 95, one day before the famous march on Washington took place where Martin Luther King Jr. made his I Have a Dream speech. It was ironic that the American's preeminent black intellectual died on the eve of this great civil rights gathering which had gained so much energy from his ideas against segregation. Du Bois had long, long ago concluded that the possibility of racial equality was a receding mirage for people of color. At the time of his death, he was leading the life of a political exile in Ghana. Talcott Parsons, 1902-1979, was the sociologist most responsible for developing theories of structural functionalism in the United States. He presided over the Department of Social Relations at Harvard College from the 1930s until he retired in 1973. Parsons' early research was quite empirical, but he later returned to the philo philosophical and theoretical side of sociology in the structure of social action. <clears throat> 1937, Parsons presented English translations of the writings of European thinkers, most notably Weber and Durkheim. In his best-known work, The Social System, 1951, Parsons portrayed society as a stable system of well-ordered, interrelated parts. His viewpoint elaborated on Durkheim's perspective. Robert K. Merton also had been an influential proponent of functionalist theory in his classic work, Social Theory and Social Structure, 1968, first published in 1949. Merton spelled out the functionalist view of society. One of his main contributions to sociology was to distinguish between two forms of social functions, manifest functions and latent functions. By social functions, Merton meant those social processes that contribute to the ongoing operation or maintenance of society. Manifest in functions are the intended and recognized consequences of these processes. For example, one of the manifest functions of going to college is to obtain knowledge, training, and a degree in a specific area. Latent functions are the unintended or not readily recognized consequences of such processes, which I think is probably why bad people are using sociology for their lives and stuff to get elected through political science people working for them to give them the idea or uh, or there's a, a the churches whose products are people therefore college can also offer the opportunity of establishing lasting friendships and finding potential marriage partners under the leadership of Parsons and Merton, sociology in the United States moved away from a concern with social reform and adopted a so-called value-free perspective. This perspective, which Max Weber advocated, requires description and explanation rather than prescription. It holds that people should be told what is, not what should be. And that just does appear to be what sociology is about now. It's for a bad thing just to control people and that is so wrong even a religion acting in that capacity has raised above the one true living god 
and is committing blasphemy for money. Now we'll see what will happen in that. I have a couple of other things in here that I found interesting. Um, <clears throat> uh, in here about religion, like an emotion, one of the functions of ritual and prayer is to produce an appropriate emotional state. This can be done in many ways. In some religions, participants in ritual deliberately attempt to alter their states of consciousness through the use of drugs, fasting, sleep deprivation, and induction of physical pain. Thus, Scandinavian groups ate mushrooms that caused euphoria, as did many native Siberian tribes. Various Native American religions use peyote, a button-like mushroom that contains a hallucinogenic drug. There are approximately 250,000 members of the Native American church who believe that the use of peyote brings them closer to God. Even though it is illegal to use peyote in most states, Congress made it possible for federally recognized tribes to practice traditional Indian ceremonies, even if it violates local laws. And this is so true. These drugs do bring you closer to God, as they have me. And you finding people that's against legalizing drugs, they are working for Satan, because they hate God. And the gifts he gave us gave us like the herb marijuana it was one of the meat that was spoken of in Genesis although not every religion tries to induce altered states of consciousness and believers all religions do recognize that such states may happen and believe that they can be the result of divine <clears throat> or sacred intervention in human affairs prophets of course are thought to receive divine inspiration Religions differ in the degree of importance they attach to such happenings. And I have to wonder, would it be punishment for the way that some of these people are are being mean and hurtful to other people by jumping in their personal businesses and things and find a closeness to God through punishment? Because that would be one way to get closer to Him. And we shall see. Uh, I have one or two more things in here to talk about, and I'll be right back. Well, here's the last of it. I've studied a little bit on uh, the secular, secularism, and that. And in sociology book, secularism is under the religious part of it. Now, I need to note one of the things, or a few of the things, seem to say that secularism has no morals but if that's true then there is no justice is there or was justice a part of all Americans believed in give secularism the morals that it needed and why we separated church and state secularism they say Many scholars have noted that the modern society is becoming increasingly secularized. That is, less influenced by religion. Religious institutions are being confined to ever-narrowing spheres of social influence, while people turn to secular sources for moral guidance in their everyday lives. Berger, 1967. This shift is reflected in Americans' lack of religious knowledge. They are, for the most part, notoriously indifferent to and ignorant of the basic doctrines of their faiths. Of course, social and political leaders still rely on religious symbolism to influence secular behavior. The American Pledge of Allegiance tells us that we are one nation, under God, indivisible, and our currency tells us that in God we trust. Since the turn of the century, however, modern society has turned increasingly to science rather than to religion to point the way. Secular political movements have emerged that attempt to provide most, if not all, of the functions that religion traditionally fulfilled. For example, communism prescribes a belief system and an organization 
that rival those of any religion. Like religions, communism offers a general concept of the nature of all things and provides symbols that, for its inheritance, establish powerful feelings and attitudes and supply motivation toward action. Thus, some political movements lack only a sacred or supernatural component to qualify as religious religions. In this increasingly secular modern world, however, sacred legitimacy appears to be unnecessary for establishing meaning and value in life. <clears throat> what I learned about the Republicans when I first started out years ago, and I tell you, talked all these church people into supporting them and putting all these crooks in offices and things. And still yet, they, a lot of the candidates go out bragging about their religion pretty much by talking about it. They want those kind of people to do it, but yet these are people that do not live by their religion and that religion means nothing to them if they don't. You've got policies and beliefs that you live your life by. But politicians don't do that unless they believe in morals and justice for all people. And this is another thing that I thought of. And this is in the Constitution of the United States. Article VI. All debts contracted engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding, the senators and representatives before mentioned and the members of the several state legislatures and all executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Now those uh, political candidates that talk about religion during their campaigns, doesn't that point them out as men who do treason? Men and women who are committing treason to our nation? I would think so. And as the Republicans are, they do not believe in equality. They forbid people to talk about equality because they want to think they're better than everybody else. And I think it's kind of connected with our education here, too. And one of the things in here, in the part about education, the credential society. <clears throat> Conflict theorists would also argue that we have become a credentialized society. Collins, 1979. A degree or certificate <clears throat> has become necessary to perform a vast variety of jobs. This credential might not necessarily cause the recipient to perform the job better. Even in professions such as medicine, engineering, and law, most knowledge is acquired by performing tasks <clears throat> on the job. However, credentials have become a rite of passage and a sign that a certain process of indoctrination and socialization has taken place. The individual is recognized as having gone through a process of educational so socialization that constitutes adequate preparation to hold the occupational status. Therefore, college and universities act as, a gate, as gatekeepers, allowing those who are willing to play by the rules 
and it sounds more like a game to me, to succeed while bar barring those who might disrupt the social order. Conform to the elite's immoral rules or you don't get to play. At the same time, advanced degrees are undergoing constant change and becoming less specialized. A law degree from Harvard, Yale, or Columbia is less a measure of the training of a particular candidate than a basis on which leading corporations, major public agencies, and important law firms can recruit those who will maintain the status quo. The degree signifies that the candidate has forged links with the established networks and achieve grades necessary to obtain a degree. Colleges and universities are miniature societies more than centers of technical and scientific education. In these environments, students learn to operate within the established order and to accept traditional social hierarchies. In this sense, they provide the power structure, structure with a constantly replenished army of defenders of the status quo. According to this view, those who could disrupt the established order are not permitted to enter positions of power and responsibility. <clears throat> For more on this topic, see day-to-day -day sociology. Is a college degree worth the trouble? <coughs> <coughs> now this is more like a communism type beliefs. When you get it like this, you destroying the equality in our nation, then uh, you're trying to destroy it. You're trying to institute dictators. And it's like what I said, it's who you know if you can get a decent job. We have problems we need to fix. And this needs to be changed, definitely. So we'll see how it turns out. It's getting dark now. Y'all have a great night or day, wherever you are. And I'll study more on it later.